Hey, what is up, Sneed Sports Nation? It's your boy, Sneed. With this week of the NFL Roundup, we've got week one in the books. The wild card round is complete. We have the winners. We have the losers. We know who's going on to the next round, and I got all the details for you in this video. Stick around. All that starts now. So the 2021 NFL playoffs are underway. We've got the wild card round in the books. All six games have been played, and they were all fantastic for the most part. Let's start with game one. I'll give you the rundown. The final score, Bills 27 and the Colts 24. It was a pretty close game. It was very competitive. There were a lot of close plays all the way to the end. Josh Allen was the goon of the game, 324 yards passing, two TDs with no picks, 54 yards on the run. You know, pretty much it was it was all him. Nobody else could really get things going on the offensive side from the rushing game. Stefan Diggs, a man amongst boys, six receptions for 128 yards and a TD. The Colts, Phillip Rivers, 300 yards passing. I think he went for 309 with two TDs and no picks. Jonathan Taylor was effective running the ball, 24 for 78 and a TD. And then Jack Doyle and Josh Pascal both had TDs on their side. Buffalo held on to this game. They made just enough plays on the offensive side of the ball, and they made just enough plays on the defensive side as well. They will need to play better in the next round if they're going to advance to make it to the AFC Championship game. It's going to be required of them because the team they're going to play next is a lot more dangerous, and we'll be getting to that matchup on a different video, but the Bills do hold on and they move on to the next round. Game number two also played on Saturday was the Rams at the Seahawks. The Rams took it 30-20. to This did surprise me a bit, not just the fact that the Rams won, but how they did it. The Rams ended up starting their backup quarterback, Walford, who got hurt very early in the game. Jared Goff came on in relief, who was also hurt and recovering from an injury. He threw for 155 yards with a TD and a pick. Cam Akers was effective running the ball with 131 rushing yards and a TD. Robert Woods, a receiving TD. And, of course, the Rams' defense really surprised. They were very effective. They scored a defensive touchdown. The Seahawks had overall pretty much just a bad game. Russell Wilson was decent. He had two TDs with a pick for 174 yards. The volume just was not there. The offense was not in sync. Chris Carson rushed the ball for 77 yards. DK Metcalf, a man amongst boys, five receptions, 96 yards, two TDs in his dominant performance. Their defense on Seattle's side, horrible. They couldn't stop a nosebleed. Really, it was a tale of just the Rams' defense being better and the Seahawks not being able to do enough, I think, possessing the ball and then running it. You think about it, I mean, did the Rams really have any business beating the Seahawks with a backup quarterback that started and then a hurt quarterback coming in? I just don't like the way this played out for the Seahawks. Terrible ending to their season. The Rams move on to the next round. Game three on Saturday, this was the evening game. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers 31, the Washington football team 23. Tom Brady, the GOAT, with 381 yards passing, two TDs with no picks. Leonard Fournette, 93 yards on the ground with a score. Mike Evans, six receptions for 119 yards. Chris Godwin and Antonio Brown both had receiving TDs. Defensively, I thought they had a decent showing. Washington, they started uh, Heineke over injured Alex Smith. He had 306 yards passing with a TD and an interception. He did also have a rushing TD. Uh, he fought valiantly, very tough guy. I give him a lot of props, but Washington just could not get anything going on the rushing side of things. I want to say that Sims had seven receptions for 104, Terry McLaurin six for 75. It was a tough game for Washington. They just they didn't really have a chance, in my opinion. They lack the talent to keep up with a team like Tampa Bay. They're, you know, The Tampa Bay team is loaded offensively. A valiant effort by Heineke and the Washington team, but they came up short against a team that was just better than them. All right, the next game was the Sunday games. Game one, this one was the early game, the 1 o'clock game, the Ravens 20, the Titans 13. Lamar Jackson had a TD on the ground, 136 yards rushing, threw the ball for 179, and he also threw a pick. Uh, J.K. Dobbins had a rushing TD. I think Hollywood Brown also uh, with a big game, seven receptions for 109. Defensively, the Ravens were excellent. They stifled the Tennessee rush attack. They really did a good job of containing Derrick Henry. Ryan Tannehill only had one TD, but I think he also had a pick. It's possibly had two picks if I'm reading that correctly. He threw it for 165. Derrick Henry only 40 yards on 17 attempts, no TDs. He did throw in three receptions for a measly 11 yards. A.J. Brown is hashtag good at football. Such a good young wide receiver. Six receptions for 83 
and a tud. Baltimore's defense too good. They did a good job of stopping Derrick Henry early and often. He never really got any rhythm. The Baltimore offense was good enough, you know, to beat Tennessee on a few key plays. Uh, Lamar Jackson, a very, very effective runner. He looked fast. He looked decisive. I know he didn't do much throwing it, but, man, is he scary when he rushes the ball. Look out for Baltimore. They're playing very, very good football. If that defense comes through for Lamar Jackson, he might be able to do pretty much whatever he needs to to pull off a win in the playoffs. We'll see how they match up next week. The later game was the Saints at the Bears. Saints 21, Bears 9. Drew Brees, two TDs with no picks for 265 yards. Alvin Kamara with 99 yards on the on the ground with a TD. Michael Thomas uh, a receiving TD. I think defensively they did pretty good. Uh, the Bears' offense was also pretty bad. Mitch Trubisky, a TD with zero picks, 199 yards passing. No rushing game from the Bears. They really didn't get anything going there. Uh, Jimmy Graham, the timeless wonder, a TD. Allen Robinson, six receptions for 55 yards. Really, the the story for the Bears was just bad offensive play. I knew that Mitch Trubisky have to have a big game for them, to, you know, in order to win. Uh, and the Saints' defense was obviously too much for the offense to overcome for the Bears. And the offense for the Saints, good enough. They probably could have scored more. They didn't really look all that sharp. But too much for the Bears. They just couldn't handle it. The last game in this one was the craziest of them all. The Browns 48, the Steelers 37. Baker Mayfield silences the critics for one week. Three TDs, no picks with 263 passing. Nick Chubb 76 yards on the ground. Four receptions for 69 yards and a TD. Kareem Hunt, eight rushes for 48 yards and a TD. One reception for 13. Jarvis Landry was effective. Five receptions for 92 and a TD. And then Austin Hooper, seven receptions for 46 and a TD. The Browns' defense was opportunistic. They did just enough to make enough plays. Pittsburgh, they looked like absolute trash. Their offense is garbage. They could not effectively run the ball. They never committed to it. Ben Roethlisberger looked like hot trash. Ben threw, I think, 68 times for 501 yards. Four TDs, and he matched that with four picks. Uh, James Conner had a TD. Juju went for 13 receptions and 157 yards and a score. Uh, Johnson, 11 receptions for 117. Eric Ebron, seven receptions for 62 with a TD. Honestly, the Browns opened up on a on a tear. They had like 28 points in the first quarter. They never looked back. Uh, the coaches weren't there. They had COVID. Baker concerns were there, and he came through. They were missing offensive linemen. They were able to effectively run the ball, pass the ball. They moved the chains. They possessed it. They did everything they had to do to dismantle the Pittsburgh Steelers. And and honestly, Pittsburgh looked terrible. Uh, Pittsburgh has never been able to effectively run the ball over the course of the last couple of months uh, during the regular season and going to the playoffs. If ben, Big Ben has to throw the ball 60-plus times, you're not going to win. It's just not going to happen. And the defense had so much pressure with all the three and outs. You know, the offense never really possessing the ball and controlling the clock. They were just tired. And the Browns' offensive line really dominated the defensive linemen of the Steelers. The DBs were exploited. The Browns took chances and won. Uh, the running backs of the Browns were too much. The Steelers looked terrible. Uh, this was a horrible loss, not just the fact that they did lose, but the fact of the way they lost. It just looked really, really bad. I think a lot going on at the Steelers' facilities today was probably a lot of doubt. There's probably a lot of people second-guessing themselves over on the Steelers' side. The Browns are going to ride this wave, moving it to next Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs. We'll do a separate video on that in which we'll look at all the matchups, so look out for that later on in the week. I think we'll probably either do it Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. So be on the lookout. Make sure that you are subscribed and you have that bell notification icon turned on so you never miss an upload from Sneed Sports. That wraps up this video. I hope your favorite team won. Let me know what you guys think of these wins. Uh, who are you rooting for moving forward? Uh, you know, Let me know what you think is going to happen next week with these matchups up and coming. I've got them here on the screen. Tell me what you think down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on that. That's it for this one. I hope you have a great rest of the week. We'll see you soon on the next edition of Sneed Sports.